Stephen Curry's being called only a top 25 player all time. Despite his coach Steve Kerr just calling him the MJ of this era in terms of his combo of all-time value and marketability, that's been met with famous narratives like he needed Durant or he only has one finals MVP. Then there's the doubters who still don't rank him as a top five player in the game today when there's legitimate proof, including Giannis saying it himself a while back that Curry's the best. The same people who don't have him as the best player in the game today, or even number five to ten for that matter, tore apart Curry on Twitter when he was struggling a bit after regaining his rhythm following a shoulder injury, people who are likely right back on the Dubs bandwagon after his most recent 40 piece. He's not a vicious dunker like who we talked about a few days ago in Jaw Dropper, but Steph's legacy ranks right next to Michael Jordan, LeBron James, Kobe Bryant, and Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. You're about to see every bit of data I've collected which proves why Curry is the third greatest player of all time behind MJ and LeBron, and as crazy as it sounds, yes, ahead of Kobe Bean and Kareem. The most revolutionary player in basketball history in terms of his three-point shooting influence shouldn't be slept on so much. As I've said time and time again in the past, I'll say it again because the message isn't getting through. Despite KD getting swept in last year's first round by the same Boston Celtics team that Curry and Draymond took out in 2022's NBA Finals, you still see NBA fans repeat the lazy narrative that Steph needed Durant to win those two championships in 2017 and 18. Curry makes everyone around him better, he can turn players into all-star caliber just by the gravity he draws. Just look at the amount of times Curry was doubled in 2018's Finals in comparison to KD. That's why his coach just calling him the modern MJ was spot on. Many fans have drowsily forgotten that Steph became the oldest scoring champion since Michael in his iconic 98 season two years ago in 2021 to win the scoring championship, but since he lost to Braun in the play-in, which there shouldn't be any shame in, everyone forgot about Steph averaging 32 points over 63 games that year. Speaking of LeBron, we talk a lot about his defiance of father time, but in addition to that last stat I mentioned, the amount of post-age 30 or just the oldest player records that Steph set are endless as displayed by this graphic. In terms of his efficiency, Steph's 2018 campaign, his 2016 MVP year, and this current 2023 season all rank in the top six highest true shooting years of all time. Regarding this current season, Clay Thompson just comfortably responded to a question about his concern level amidst the Warriors' regular season mediocrity, saying, quote, none, zero, zero, get us there healthy, and hopefully a good seed, end quote. You can bet a lot of that statement has to do with the trust he has in the number one option of this roster, and rightfully so, because Clay's fellow Splash Brother is the only point guard in NBA history to average over 30 points per night in the NBA Finals and become NBA Champion. Greatest PG ever without question, while I'm a big fan of Magic Johnson. After winning that title and dominating in said historic fashion, it speaks to his off-court humbleness that Steph had this to say at the Warriors parade when talking about he, Iggy, Clay, and Draymond while also thanking the fans. You know, with us four, uh, we represent you guys. Like, the, the life that you give us, the, the inspiration. That shows you why Steph's marketability is at a LeBron, MJ level in his own humble way, but that didn't stop fans from blasting Steph when the Warriors were 10th in the West when he got hurt and improved to the 6th seed without him. And give credit to Draymond for making massive defensive stances down the stretch, Green's the Dennis Rodman to Steph's MJ, but what people didn't realize during the Dubs' recent winning streak was the impact Steph was having from the sidelines as the Dubs' number one supporter. The energy this man exerts is contagious a driving factor behind the Dubs being the most successful NBA franchise over the last decade. Only two players in NBA history have recorded a game with 11 made threes on 80 plus percent three-point shooting. One of them's a bull that isn't MJ and Zach Levine, and the other is of course the man of the hour. Steph's also one of five players next to Levine, J.R. Smith, Clay, Dame, and Harden to have put up at least three games of knocking down 10 plus triples. Steph could miss nearly his next 500 triples, yet still have a higher three-point percentage than Ray Allen. I get you're aware he's the three-point GOAT, so those stats may not be impressive to you, but what about his overall value? In terms of that, over the last decade, Chef leads every other player ahead of the second-ranked KD by nearly plus 2,000 in plus-minus. 
It's the impact on the game which cements Steph's legacy though, not even the fact that he's been the driving factor behind four of the last eight NBA championship wins, but it's the fact that you've got kids in high school making look away step back threes from 30 feet look easy. Who remembers when last month Steph made six threes from 25 plus feet, four of which came off the dribble? I'm sorry, but just no one throughout the history of this sport has had the type of impact that Steph has had. Curry's currently fighting through a shoulder injury that would have required him to be out four to six months if he had gone through with the surgery. Jason Tatum in Boston, who just dropped 51, is in a similar situation with his wrist. On the topic of an MVP candidate, who a lot of fans are rightfully claiming is the best in the world right now, Jason Tatum was quite frankly outdueled by Steph in last year's finals. Boston's bounced back given they're the number one team in the league, but last June, Curry's output in comparison to the opponent's number one option was night and day. While the Celtics are the best team in the East, Steph and the Dubs beat them on December 12th with Curry saying night-night to the narrative that he's carried defensively. Steph's one of the best point guard stoppers in the NBA, despite being constantly attacked on this end of the court by the opponent's game plan. Crazy to believe the Minnesota Timberwolves took two point guards over him in the top 10 of 2009's draft. The Wolves then gave Golden State Wiggins and Kaminga over a decade later. Most underrated part of Steph's game is his finishing bag, as early in the year, these were the most efficient paint finishers in basketball, a bunch of 6 foot 10 plus towers and Steph. In Curry's aforementioned 32 point per game 2020-21 season, where he edged out Bradley Beal for the scoring title, he was the most efficient player by a mile. I think this is one of his most underrated years. In that 2021 campaign, six NBA players took over 100 threes after seven or more dribbles and one shot better than 39%. That was Steph, who shot 11 percentage points better at 50%. Of course, he's known for these plays where he gets just an inch of space after a high pick and roll and is able to hit off-balanced pull-ups in the face of drop coverage defenders. Before Steph, no one was doing that. Steph's also created his own move throughout his iconic career, as the Curry slide features Steph simultaneously crossing his defender over while using a moving behind the back momentum cross as he shows off against Kispert right here. Again, he pulls off that Curry slide, where he ridiculously sheds two defenders while stepping into a fadeaway triple over the outstretched arms of Kyle Kuzma. The arc, power, yet finesse on that bomb was incredible. I want to focus on these off-ball actions though, where on this play, as Looney and Jerome execute the main pick and roll action on the weak side, Steph sets a strong side pin down and elusively pops to the right corner. Try to watch the slight shuffle to take up space and get him just a tad further away from the closeout of former Toronto Raptor DeLon Wright. Content to be the on-ball screener, he sets this one and pops out to the left wing, drawing gravity which leaves green open on the left side. That's weak wizard backside defense, I know, but a nifty no-look dime sets up Dre. Last but not least, here he acts uninterested as he fills out the lane in transition, getting the attention off him, but then he speeds up after crossing half. JP reads Curry's movement the entire time, setting him up with the cross-court bullet. Simple filling out of the lane, but you saw a bit of everything there when it comes to Steph being a threat, even when he doesn't have the basketball. To further support my channel, please follow at dflowhoops on Instagram and Twitter. But where does Steph rank all time in your opinion? Best answer down below in the comments gets next video shoutout. Two shoutouts next video for my last upload and this one.